So, Vicky, what does mercy mean in a theological sense? Well, whenever I think of the word mercy, I think of the Hail Mary as it's sometimes prayed in Hebrew and Arabic, blessed is the fruit of your womb. And that word for womb, rechem um, or rahem, um, shares the same linguistic root as mercy in both languages. And for me, this is more than a metaphor. This is a really vivid illustration of what mercy actually means in our lives. Um, it's a womb. It's something that encloses us, keeps us safe. And more than that, it's the place where we're formed. Um, I think we're often tempted to view mercy um, in terms of some really extremely generous and personally challenging act, such as, I don't know, uh, forgiving the murderer who killed your mother or something like that. And you read these stories in the newspaper and you think, oh, that person's a saint, I couldn't do that. And in talking like this, we render mercy as something almost alien to us, mm. alien to our nature, um, when really it's our amniotic fluid. Um, it's a part of us from mm -hmm. the beginning. Great, thank you. So what does it mean to create a culture of mercy? Well, first of all, we really need to hang on to this sense that mercy is something innate and fundamental to our nature, because only that belief will allow us to do what comes next. Um, I think this is what Julian of Norwich was reaching for in her medieval writings when she describes um, Jesus as our saviour, being our mother from whom we are endlessly born and out of whom we never come. Mm. We're surrounded by this, this great mercy. Mm. And to move on from this awareness of that to creating a culture of mercy, we need to change how we see other people. And I find the beatitude on mercy very useful in that. Mm. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall be shown mercy. Mm. And that English translation is really lovely because it hinges on a verb for sight. It's not just about mercy as a transaction, like you do something kind for me, I'll do something kind for you. It's suggesting that if we are merciful, we are going to be given this wonderful new vision, this wonderful new way to see people. And another medieval author, the nameless author of The Cloud of Unknowing, um, touches on this. Um, when he or she writes, um, it's not who you are or what you have been that God sees with his merciful eyes, but what you would be. And so to create a culture of mercy, we really be, need to be nurturing that innate capacity to see and believe the best of people. Mm -hmm even if that best isn't yet showing in their actions. Mm. And is this approach meaningful in a secular age? I think that's a really important question because I'm aware everything that I've just said is predicated on my belief in Christ, that Christ surrounds us, Christ is our mother, and that Christ's nature is mercy. So what does it mean to talk about this in a society where many people don't share that belief? Um, and I would say that it still has just as much relevance, um, perhaps even more so. Um, firstly, um, for Christians in this society, the presence of differences of opinion um, does not make it harder to practice mercy. I think it makes it easier that difference in belief is an invitation uh, rather than uh, an obstacle or a challenge. And I think we see this in a verse that appears in the letter to the Hebrews. Um, the, the one that goes, let us go to Jesus outside the camp, bearing the sufferings he bore. For here we have no abiding city, but we look for the city that is to come. And so for me to go beyond the camp um, means to leave behind your certainties. Those might be theological, they might be political, they might be something else entirely. In order to have this encounter from, with people who are perhaps very different from yourself. Mm -hmm. And the result. Um, is the creation of this compassionate community, this mm -hmm. community that's distinguished by solidarity and mutual understanding rather than by any kind of partisan loyalty. And that to me is intrinsic to mercy. Mm -hmm. I feel that this is what we mean when we talk of no abiding city. Um, we're creating a different kind of community together through mercy. And for the non-Christians in this community, they might not share um, this belief in Christ. Um, they may not have any theistic belief at all. Um, but one thing everyone has in their history, every single person, is a memory of the time when either they needed mercy and were not shown it, very painful, or hopefully a memory of the time when they needed it and they received it, and it was a really transformative thing for them. While we might not have shared theological beliefs, shared faith, we all have shared vulnerabilities and shared pain and hopefully shared joys as well. 
And so because of those things, there's never a situation or a time when mercy ceases to be relevant to anyone's life. Fantastic. <laughs>